Hi, this is Lori Nordstrom, and you are listening to From Nothing to Profit. Welcome to From Nothing to Profit, a photographer's podcast with Matt and Kaya, where each week they talk to photographers about what is working in their business now so you can swipe those ideas and grow your business faster. Hey, everybody. Welcome to From Nothing to Profit. So on today's show, we have Lori Nordstrom. And I'm really excited to have Lori on the show because Lori's been in the photo industry for more than 20 years. And recently, she's actually made a pretty big pivot in her business. And she's moved on to some coaching stuff and sold her business. And I just think it's really it's gonna be a really interesting conversation to see what her business has become. Because, you know, 10 years ago, when I got into the business, Lori was really big in the industry. She was on stage all the time. Alice and I learned a lot from her in the last, you know, last five years we've worked uh, with Lori more on a personal basis and really got some great nuggets of information from her. Um, but it'll be interesting to see where she thinks the industry is going, see where her journey's taken her, um, see how her coaching stuff is going. And I'm just, I'm just super excited. So welcome Lori. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And hi, Kyle. <laughs> We're excited that you're here, Lori. You, I think the wonderful thing about you is that you've been in kind of all parts of the photography business. And I think you can speak to people on all levels. And so I think this is really going to be fun to hear what you have to say. So I think, Matt, were you going to ask Lori to share with us just a little bit more about herself and her areas of expertise? Yeah, I think I just I, I want to know more about what's going on in, in your journey right now, Lori, because I know stuff is changing pretty fast for you and you can kind of give us an update on what's going on. Yeah, well, definitely things have changed, as we all know, and the industry things have ah, been a roller coaster, right, over the last 10 years at least. But um, I have had my own business since I was 16 years old. So I've never worked for anyone else and becoming an, a quote unquote entrepreneur in the photography industry wasn't anything that was a scary thing for me, but I do know it's scary for most photographers who are on the the artist end instead of the business end. And so it has been an interesting journey for me along the way. Um, I did start into photography in the late, uh, late nineties. I was in my late twenties. So that gives you an idea of how old I am, but I did start at that time and apprenticed for a year in a, in another studio in Texas and worked for him for a year. And then at the end of that year, I moved from Texas to Iowa and that was really my launch. I decided when I moved, that I was done with my other business, which was a hair salon. And when I moved, I just said, I'm a photographer and this is it. And just kind of started out with a bang, just did it. Did I meet you like right after you moved to Iowa? Yeah, I think we met. We I was thinking about this today, Kai, and I think we had to have met in 2000. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Wow. From the very so, beginning. Aww. Which, yeah, I know, which is crazy. So we've known each other for almost 20 years. <laughs> yeah. In 2000, I was in third grade. I'm, no, I'm, to- I'm, jo- I'm joking. I'm totally joking. Yes, you're uh, totally lying. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm much older than that, but I just had to take that opportunity to. to- yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Um, so, so what are you doing now, Lori? Tell us kind of what's going on now. Well, you know, over the years I have, you know, had different goals, I guess, over the years and um, even into different genres of photography. I think when I started, it was all about kids. And then I started photographing newborns and kind of became known for a newborn and maternity. And then after that, I was missing out on the kids. And so I went back and started really building my kids business and that turned into uh, families, and then they got older and became high school seniors. And so it all kind of evolved as my time in the industry went on as far as what I was photographing and what I was excited about. And then five years ago, I actually it's been, well, almost six years now. But yeah, five years ago, I got married again. And at the time I got married, thank you. <laughs> uh, it doesn't feel like congratulations are in order anymore because it's happening in <laughs> six years. But at at that time, I was also down two kids out of the house, had one more child at home who was going to be graduating in 2016. And so at that time, I decided that I was going to very intentionally start downsizing my business. And I will say that as somebody who always goes into things with goals and a plan and more of a business hat than the artist hat, for sure... It was very eye-opening to me to start downsizing. And at that time that I started downsizing, I kind of started hand-selecting the clients that I was going to be continuing to work with. 
And really what it comes down to is every single year digging into my top 20 percenters. So that Mm -hmm. 80-20 rule. And what happened at that time was, I mean, I've always believed in the 80-20 rule, but when I literally started taking action on this and choosing those top 20 percenters, my profit didn't change very much. And that just shows you how true and valuable that concept is if you really believe and dig into that. Um, you know, and it just, it was there on paper for me as I started downsizing that each year as I downsized, it was like, yeah, you know, profit's not really moving too much. And of Mm -hmm. course, downsizing didn't mean just the number of clients, but it also meant the number of employees, what I was outsourcing. It also eventually led to my overhead as I sold my giant studio, which Kai, you've been to that studio. Yeah. Um, But I had, you know, a big 8,000 square foot studio that was, of course, a lot of overhead. And I sold that two years ago. And so just each year downsizing, downsizing. And really, as I started coaching more and being in that part of the industry, getting out there, speaking, coaching, teaching, um, I really thought that that was going to be my future. I really saw photography kind of completely phasing out for me. But... What happened was as I continued to look for holes in the market, I started seeing a big one as I was working with other creative entrepreneurs in business. And so I'm excited to share that yeah. with you and kind of the hole that I saw. Yeah, and, that, um, and that's the next question we're going to go to. I mean, we're definitely going through the list fast. So you and I yeah. talked about this a couple of days ago, so I'm able to kind of lead us in this a little bit. But, you know, we were talking about what's working now and you were super excited when you were talking about doing some of this branding stuff. So yeah, just dive right into it. What do you see is working right now in the photography business or photography industry? Yeah. Well, and and I will say that this is for me and I think there are so many great things happening in our industry right now. And I'm excited to talk about that, but what happened for me is, and I think, um, you know, Kaya can probably attest to this too, even watching her mom and then herself having been in the industry for so long, just as we grow and change and as our kids go through seasons our interest in what we're photographing kind of changes as well. And so I, I was going to say that. Yeah. yeah. When you were saying I did my babies and then I did my children, I was like, it sounds like it was following right along with where your family was at the time. Absolutely. And I know it's not that way for everyone, but I do see that a lot that as kids get older, you, you know, your interests just shift. And so you get really excited about photographing different ages and stages as, you know, as things change in your own life. But um, I really did see, and part of this comes for me, I, I work with a lot of photographers who have to photograph, like they love shooting so much. It's such a passion of theirs. And this sounds terrible, but it just never has been my passion. My passion has been running a business. And I went into the photography industry in that way that I'm a business owner that happens to have a camera in my hand. I've never had this like, I got to shoot, I got to shoot, like this is what drives me. And so I didn't have a problem feeling like I was going to phase out of that part of my life. But then as I, you know, my kids are now out of the house, I have three grandkids. And as I started working with more and more businesses, what I started seeing was right now in the, in the industry, a lot of photographers are doing headshot sessions. And so there's not really a whole lot that's special about them anymore. Just like most genres that we photograph, it cannot be just about the the pretty pictures anymore. You've got to have something in the experience and something in the, in the product and, you know, the whole entire package. And I do call it a full experience, you know, session, even when I'm doing family sessions now. But what I found with these businesses that I was working with, was that they've got opportunities all around them for quote unquote headshot sessions. But as I was working with them and asking them questions about who they are and what their purpose is, and I'm really digging deep into them as a person, which we all know personal branding is where it is right now. Mm -hmm. Even large corporations, it is a personal brand. That's why Subway had Jared and uh, you know, Wendy's had little Wendy, you know, I mean, like we're, it's personal branding. It's what it's all about. And so with these small businesses, being able to take the idea of the headshot session and turn it into a complete branding experience, a branding session makes, I mean, it's so different. And I think people will start picking up on this more and more, 
But right now there's a huge hole in the market for this. And people are just hungry for somebody who will listen and hear who they are, what their purpose is, and, and even ask them questions around that, and then be able to capture that and photograph it for them. Okay, Lori, that was awesome. I love hearing about personal branding and where you think things are going. You're doing the personal branding for people and you're excited about um, working with them. Are you selling them like a package or are you doing like a session fee and then something later? Like how, it, how does that work, the process itself? Yeah, so this is the fun and the beauty of doing something that's a little bit different. It's just a twist on something. And a lot of it's just language and communication and then taking the time to sit down and go through questions with them and kind of dig some things out, letting them talk. Uh, Mm -hmm. But, you know, doing things a little bit differently in this way, you really get to charge whatever you want because they don't have anything to compare it to. And that's a beautiful thing. And another thing that has happened with this is I have been a preacher (laughs) around you know, wall concepts and albums and something that they get to, you know, see and enjoy every day when we're talking about family portraits and high school seniors. But with branding, they do need, they actually need the digital files. Yeah. And so it becomes a different kind of session because that's what it's all about. And so um, do you want to talk actual numbers? Sure. Yeah. Um, So I charge $3,000 and they get 30 files with that. So that's quite a lot of files. Yeah. Uh, but it's also a lot of value. And what I tell them is we're going to capture three types of images during these sessions. And one of them is going to be headshots. And I do want to come up with a different name for that. Maybe you can help me, Kaya. But uh, I've tried business portraits and that works sometimes. But a lot of people that I'm working with are they're creative entrepreneurs. So it might be a restaurant owner or a jewelry designer or a fitness expert. And so business portraits doesn't sound exciting. It's not sexy. So, but those, the three things that I'm photographing are um, headshots, lifestyle shots. And so that's going to be them doing what they do. And then we do uh, actual social media branding images like lay flats. So branded images. Okay. So that's going to bring in their their product or their service or elements of their branding, and we're photographing them for them those for them. And so I'm t- typically ending up with about a hundred images, and they're seeing them right after I shoot them. And so I'm I'm doing this session. I treat it like a commercial shoot, lots of planning around it. But then we we photograph, and then they see all their images. And so I t- they can narrow down to thirty, and that's great but I charge a hundred dollars per additional image and they typically do add on. So it really ends up being a nice, you know, a really nice profit point and it is digital files. And while, while I like to preach on the products, let's face it. If we can charge $3,000 for a digital session that doesn't have product included, our profit margin is much higher. Yes. Well, and these are, you know, they're not, things that are going to be on the wall for 25, 30 right. more, more years. There are things that they need for a certain time period. And so it makes sense for it to be a digital product. Yeah, yeah. I think that it's an interesting, I think the word portrait, you know, if you say you're doing portrait lifestyle and branded images or something like that, like just yeah. one single word to describe yeah. each one or personality or because I feel like that, that image needs to connect with them. Uh, you know, or you need, needs to show who they are to the people and not necessarily just what they do. Yeah, for sure. And that's, you know, part of one of the questions that I ask everyone that I work with and as we're kind of narrowing into their brand is, you know, let, tell me three to five words that, that describe your personality. Mm-hmm. And that's really going to dictate where the session goes because, and I, and I talk to them about this, is that, you know, your personality should show up in your marketing, in your branding, and even in the end, in your product and your service and the experience that you offer your client. And so that's what I want to show off. And that's why a lot of times the quote unquote headshot doesn't really work. But yeah. um, I like the personality portrait, you know. Yeah, that, something you know, like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, so who are the clients for this? Because when I think about it, I have people that have big businesses that I've worked with and I've done honestly, this type of thing for them for years. And they are like a very specific client that I don't really even try to go find. 
Or I've done this for people and I do it pro bono to help women grow their businesses, that type of thing. So who, like if you were going to go out and find, you know, 20 of these clients, what, where would you look? Well, for me, I really love working with small business owners. And as a coach, one of my specialties is systems to six figures. And so I'm typically, my, my target market are women in business who are working to take the thing they love, create a business of it, and reach that first six figures. Uh-huh. So, um, so that is also my branding uh, shoots. That is my target client. Okay. However, I've also done these with complete HR teams mm-hmm. and branded that HR and what the culture looks like for that company. And so that can go into large corporations. You can do this for the C-suite team, you know, the executives of any company. So, you know, this comes into play for really whatever you're, you know, and I, I would encourage anybody who's listening that wants to do this to really define who your target client is. Is it the C-suite? Is it the HR team uh, defining a culture? Is it the small business owner? And kind of define that target client. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to photograph some of the others, but then you can you can clearly market to that one target client. Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely found that there are specific businesses where most of my portrait clients come from. And so I could see that, you know, just segueing into working at, on the branding side of things as well. Yes. So um, Lori, thanks for that. That is a, a great, a great thing to start thinking about. And I think we're going to go to a break yeah. and then we'll come back and find out what you're uh, most fired up about in the portrait industry today. Wonderful. Hey everyone. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You look at your calendar and notice you need clients now. So you do a little marketing and get some phone calls. You get busy helping those new clients. They schedule sessions, they place orders, and life is good. But once they're done, your calendar is empty again. The reason is you didn't have time to market while you were busy. Sometimes your business feels like a roller coaster. And let me tell you something, it is. And believe me, you're not alone. Photographers everywhere have the same problem. But I have some great news. Matt's business, Allison Ragsdale Photography, after years of trial and error, has cracked the code. It works so well, he's created a new class all about it. It's called Get Clients Now, a dead, simple approach to getting photography clients. Everyone at From Nothing to Profit is excited to share this info with you because this system helped Matt and Allison book hundreds of clients this year at their studio. And the best part about this system is that it's simple to set up and it works while you're sleeping. No hard selling or creepy marketing. All you have to do is help your clients answer their most pressing questions. Clients love the system and say it is the number one reason they book with Matt and Allison. If you're interested in learning more about this system, go to photopodcast.co forward slash simple. Matt has created a short free video that introduces this system. If you like what you hear, podcaster listeners get an exclusive discount on the full class. So make sure you go to photopodcast.co forward slash simple and sign up for the free video. It will help you book more clients now and create the business you've always wanted. All right, everybody, welcome back. So today we're talking to Lori Nordstrom and she just dropped some awesome knowledge on us about branding shoots and how she's doing that. And I, my my mind is blown and I took some a lot of notes. But the next question we're going to move on to, Lori, is what are you fired up about in the industry today or, or where do you think the industry is going or what are you watching? And like when you think of the industry, what are you thinking about? Well, of course, when we hear this question and you think fired up, it's it's almost to me like what's getting to you and agitating you. And I think the normal answer is the digital photographer and the every photographer because everyone is a photographer these days. But it also fires me up in the other way. I get super excited about this because I think it's just it's so clear that the gap is widening. And It's sad for the person who's stuck in the middle because there's not really a place for them anymore. And we do see, I know Kaya has seen this too with uh, people that we've known for years and years and years that they're so afraid of the competition at the bottom that they're, they don't feel like they can raise their prices or do things any differently. And they're like just sinking. And a lot of them are closing up shop. But what's happening for the people who are willing to step up and create a luxury brand, there's, I mean, this is such an exciting time for that to happen in our industry um, more than ever before. And there is a place for the photographer who wants to be that high-end luxury brand to really raise their prices. And along with raising their prices, also raising the level level of experience, how they step up and serve, 
how they're you know getting themselves out there as far as that brand and who they show up to be. So I think it's a super exciting time in our industry. And um, I'll, I'll just tell you and kind of equate this back to my hair salon days, and this will age me as well. But in the 80s, when I started my uh, hair salon, uh, the, the Floby came out. And I don't know if you guys, Matt, you might not remember this. You, neither one of you might remember this. But the Floby came out, which was all over uh, TV. And it was this device that you could cut your all your family's hair at home. Cut your own oh hair at gosh. home. I, I do and remember it now. <laughs> so funny. I, you know, so I, funny. I, only, I only remember it from Saturday Night Live jokes. That's all I remember. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> so, you know, and at the time, it was funny because all of us as salon owners and hairstylists, you know, we're all going, oh, my gosh, is our job going to go away? Like, people can do this at <laughs> home like they couldn't before. You know, the truth mm-hmm. is... We can all do our own hair. We can all do our own nails. We can all, you know, there's things that we can do. We can mow our own lawn, but there are services that certain people choose to purchase, to invest in because of the service and because of the experience around the service. And so I think that's just a really good thing to think of now as everyone is a photographer. We do hear people complaining all the time. I hear photographers complain that, I'm doing high school seniors and their best friends are doing it and their coach is doing it and their teacher is doing it and their aunt and their backyard neighbor. And yes, that is, that's the way we're going to live from now on. I believe everyone is a photographer. And so first of all, I would really encourage anyone who's listening to come up with another title for yourself, whether that is portrait artist or personal branding specialist or whatever, but come up with a different name because photographer means nothing. And I will tell you that right now, even saying portrait artist, people are, it's at least a conversation starter because, you know, people are like, I don't know what that means. Do you paint? Do you, you know, what does that mean? So it allows you to open up the conversation to what that means, where if you say I'm a photographer, it doesn't mean anything today. So yeah, that's so um, true. Yeah, so that, that gap is widening and it that's pretty exciting that we have the opportunity to really step up and create a luxury brand that people desire and want and will invest in. Yeah, and I really agree with you that the industry is changing in a positive way. And so I think that your message of hope is really really resonates. So, okay, Lori, we have a couple questions for you. We call this our lightning round where we ask just question after question. And so the first one is, and I don't know, it very much was holding you back, but what was holding you back from becoming a full-time photographer 20 years ago? Yeah, that that's not a good question for me. <laughs> okay. I didn't hold back. So what, I just jumped in. So yeah. yes, <laughs> I had the. I was like, I don't know if that's going to work, but uh, maybe the my question should be, what encouragement do you have for people who are considering becoming full time photographers? You know, I, th- I think the biggest thing because uh, because everyone is a photographer that if you decide that this is the business that you want, that you want an income and you want to be profitable from Uh, you know, as a photographer, the biggest thing is that you do have to wear that business hat a lot of the time. And really, you know, probably going back to that 80-20 rule, you probably have to about 80% of the time be thinking like a business owner and not an artist. And you get to play artist 20% of the time and that's fun. But you got to think like a business person and have a plan in place and, you know, really think about your your numbers, your goals and where you want to go with your business. I think that does hold a lot of people back. Yeah. How many times have you been, uh, have someone said, isn't your job the most fun in the whole world? (laughs) Exactly. It's so glamorous, right? (laughs) So fun. And you're like, it's, but you said job. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the part that you still have to do if you want to keep doing it. Yeah. So uh, the next question is, what is the best advice you've ever received? I think the best advice has been to plan to plan which that sounds redundant, but we all know we, we need to have a plan, whether you do or not, you know, that concept, but we also have to actually put si- uh, time aside to plan. And so plan to plan and knowing your numbers. And I know that's kind of two things, but I was yeah. told that. And, I, you know, a lot of people know my story because I, I'm very open about it, but uh, right after early 2000s, about 2001, 2002, I had gone digital super early 
And I know, Kaya, I know you did too. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the photographer yeah. that I worked for in Texas, he bought one of the first 560 Kodak 560 cameras in 1998. So when he went digital, I was like, well, if he goes digital, I got to go digital. And yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't for a couple of years. But um, I went digital in 2000, which was super early. And at that time, I also, I went digital. I was trying to figure it out. I was super busy. I just opened up my first retail location, got busy fast. And I was in a really, really bad place personally because I really was married to my business. And at Mm, that time I was working all day. I was working all night. I was falling asleep with my computer. Um, It was just a really rough time. And I ended up divorced. And so Mm -hmm. at that time, after I was divorced and, you know, and that was a, that was just an awful, awful time for me personally and for my family, of course. And it was at that time that I started seeking out coaching and seeking out help because I knew that if I didn't turn my business around and do it right, then I needed to quit. And I always, always say, you know, I didn't have a choice at that time. I've never worked for anybody else. I certainly wasn't going to have a job and I didn't have a choice, but to turn it around. But the truth is we all have choice. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and so I think that is probably some of the best advice I got at that time was stop, breathe, make a plan first, and then take action because you're doing it all backwards. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. But, you know, I think we often get, uh, when we're in the business, we think other people are just making it and doing perfect. And we don't have any idea of what they're going through. Yeah. So I think making it, you know, showing how personal that is makes plan to plan have a whole different, uh, a whole different connotation. Yeah. I learned the hard way. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully that can help someone else before they get to that point. Because I think we've all been in those positions where we're like, okay, we've jumped in and, uh, you know, especially the, like you with your personality, mine's similar where I just go. And then later I look back and go, Hmm, that that didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So, um, that's great advice. The next question is what is one of your personal habits that you feel like really contributes to your success? Well, I think um, it ties back to that first question, but that, uh, you know, writing a plan and setting aside time for it, I think has been just, I mean, crucial to, uh, to success over the years, as well as um, even when it came down to uh, time to start downsizing, it was all on paper. You know, I wasn't Mm going to just, yeah, just quit or just, you know, Hey, I got to do less. Um, It was all very intentional. And I think that. I don't know if I could even call it a habit because I still have to make myself do it. But that is definitely one of the things that has contributed to where I am. So do you do that with your uh, coaching now? Is that one of the big things that you do is have people uh, make a plan? Yes, absolutely. Write a plan. And, um, you know, and I like to, of course, plan for the year, but then every single mm-hmm. month go back and reevaluate what went well, what went be- what could go better. Those are the two questions I ask around everything, what went well and what could go better. Okay. And and then, um, and then I also have a daily plan and what that looks like is just the first 15 minutes of my day. And anyone who works with me, the first 15 minutes is going to be just really getting intentional about all the blocks of time that we have and how those are being filled. And so, um, that's another thing. It's not easy for someone who's a creative, I know when I started doing this, I'm like, no, I want to be spontaneous. I don't want to, I don't want to have to have every second plan of my day, but man, does it make a difference in what we actually get done. And if you've got focused blocks of time, you're not going down rabbit trails. And that is so easy. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've actually downloaded your yearly plans before. (laughs) So I I've, I've used your resources Yeah. So Lori, speaking of resources, are there any resources that you would recommend on the internet for us, for our listeners to check out on the internet? That's pretty broad, right? Um, I, of course I'm going to recommend my Facebook group. It's simply blessed life and it's group. It's a group. Um, I am there. Anyone join that? Anyone can join it. You do have to answer a couple questions before you join in. And I will tell you that it is mostly for women, Matt. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But it's, um, I am live there every Wednesday and do some sort of business tip or answer questions, um, every Wednesday. So 
that is there. And then I also wanted to just share a, a, a photographer resource that I love and uh, that I've loved more and more as I use it, but that is Fundy Designer. And I wanted to share that just because I know for me, I've, I've been producing albums since before I was digital and uh, Fundy Designer was designed around designing albums more quickly. And it certainly does. It saves like hours and hours of your life, but they now also have a wall designer. And I am all about the wall portrait and wall concepts with when we're working with uh, any of our regular portrait sessions. And this helps you to design those wall concepts to present to your client and make those suggestions. So I absolutely love it. I actually use it and I was sitting here with it today, (laughs) designing an album. And I just love it because I put the images in and then I push a button Yes. And then it's done. And then okay. I just it a little bit. Yeah. And, yeah. Life, it? and we use it too. And it's, it is such a time saver that, I mean, it's just amazing. It looks so nice. It looks so consistent. And it's just like, yeah, it takes the thinking. The, yeah. My seniors love yeah. it. Maybe we should That's have great... them sponsor this podcast. <laughs> oh, maybe they should. Mm. <laughs> we'll tell them Lori Nordstrom's told us. Yeah. The lightning round by Fundy Design. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. And then uh, also we'd love to know uh, what books that you would recommend. If you have like a specific book that you've just read or one that you've, you know, used throughout your business, is there anything that really sticks out to you that you think our readers should read or our listeners should read? Yes. You know, I mean, this is a hard question for me because I am a book nerd and I'm always reading, always reading. So really hard for me to answer, but I guess one of the ones that I wanted to mention was The Miracle Morning by Hal, Hal Elrod. Um, Mm -hmm. Hard to say that, but, um, and the miracle morning is all around creating a morning routine that gets you into, uh, you know, the right groove and the right mindset before you start your day. And I read this a couple years ago. And while I don't do everything in the book, um, what I started noticing was that everyone that I, uh, if you want to say follow or everyone that I look up to that I would consider, consider a, a book mentor or a speaker mentor, like somebody that I I watch, um, they all have morning routines and everybody is coming out even with books now, whether it's Dean Graziasi who wrote uh, Millionaire Habits or it's Lewis Howes who has, I think his is called the, the Millionaire Morning. But anyway, all these people have all these morning routine books out now. And I do think that how Elrod was one of the first ones to actually put it out there in book format. And so I um, just want to give a shout out to that book. And it is it is a powerful thing when you can wake up and do certain things in the morning. And I am not a morning person, so I've had to make myself do this. But when you've got a list of three to five things that you make sure that you get done in the morning before anything else, and it just really does change the rest of your day and how you know you feel accomplished right away, right in the morning before you even start. So what are your, can you share those? Yeah. So uh, my morning is, is always is Bible study first. And um, I'll share an app too, because there are days when I'm like, I don't have 30 minutes to be, you know, pulling out my Bible this morning. I'll do it, do it later, but I want to get it done. And so one of the apps that I love is called first five and it's by the Proverbs 31 ministries and um, just a great, and it's really meant to take five minutes of your morning and you can dig as deep as you want. So every verse that has and references, you can click on and it'll give you the first full scripture. Um, so you can dig in a little bit further, but that's always my um, number one is Bible study. And then um, number two is water <laughs> and exercise. And so I want to make sure that I'm getting up and exercising every single morning before um, in you know, some sort of movement before I start yeah. anything else. And so those are my top three. But um you know, always good to just put, you know, plug some certain things into your morning that you put your feet on the floor for and get up and get going in the right direction. Yeah, that's great. When you said water, I was like, oh, I take a bath every morning too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> You're drinking oh, it. Do you really take a bath oh, every morning? Great. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. And I read my, uh, and I read my, do my Bible study in the bath. That, that wow. might be TMI, but it's the truth. That's a, that sounds very relaxing. That's a relaxing way to start the day. I do love it. While we're sharing hygiene tips, I 
Um, I, I shower minimum twice a day. Like I do morning and <laughs> night. And, it, oh, you, and like there's sometimes that like, person I'll, too. yeah, sometimes I'll go home <laughs> in the middle of the day and shower as well. Uh, thanks for sharing, Matt. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe that that's probably a habit nobody's ever written a book about that. No. You know, How often you shower? Yeah. So like, do you, I could do smell? my millionaire morning <laughs> bathtub routine. All right. that's, <laughs> it's probably a thing. Oh gosh. Well, cool. Thanks for sharing all that, Lori. It was awesome. So real quick, let's just wrap up. If you have any parting guidance um, for everybody, so you can share that, but also share how people can connect with you and, you know, learn more about what you're doing. Yeah, fun. Well, I have completely rebranded. And so if you're used to finding me at phototalk.biz, I'm not there anymore. Um, it is my, my new site is simply blessed.life. And I am opening up more in the, you know, in the last 15 years, I suppose, everything that I'm teaching, I'm like business, business, business. And I've been, you know, like hardcore business. And I'm really opening up more into purpose and possibility and, um, you know, just some of these other pieces that really need to be in place for you to be intentional about your business. And so rebranded is simply blessed.life. And we just want to help people live their best blessed life and have a business that supports that. So that is what that's all about. And there always is a freebie download. If you head over there, um, you can scroll down and find a, a freebie. Uh, typically, it's something that is around taking your business to the next level or planning for your business, as Kaya mentioned. So yeah, that is that. And then as far as uh, guidance, I would say, um, you know, I think the the biggest thing for photographers is like we talked about is putting that business hat on and thinking like a business person when it comes time for that. And it is, it is hard to do, but it will make the difference in whether your business is profitable and successful, which in the end you get to be a happy artist if your business is profitable and successful. And so um, I would just really encourage you to take the time to put on that hat and really be intentional about the business side of what you're doing if that is where you want to go. Um, you know, there's some of us that, well, I just want to be an artist and to for the purpose of creating and that's okay. But if you are doing this to run a business, then, you know, we do have to, we do have to put the business hat on. That's wonderful. Lori, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Uh, we've learned a lot of things and I can tell that um, our listeners are going to really be able to put your ideas into practice and take their businesses from nothing or little or wherever they're at to profit. Thanks, Kaya. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, thank you, Lori. Thank you for listening to From Nothing to Profit, a photographer's podcast with Matt and Kaya. Be sure to subscribe for more business strategy and ideas to help you create the profitable and successful business you've always wanted. See you on the next episode of From Nothing to Profit.